seminar should be called the regret minimization seminar. I didn't know I had this in common with the founder of um, Amazon, but he's in the regret minimization business. He has modeled his lifestyle, what will I regret when I'm 80? Now that he's 50 something, he says now it's going to be 90, same as me. But I've had 80 for a long, long time. And there's still some things. It's, I have three regrets. One, I'm a combat trained uh, army officer. They never saw combat. Two, um, that um, the day before my mother died at, here at the castle, I'm screaming at her, don't be a not sick, you're not gonna die. Next morning she's dead. Can't go back on that, can you? And the third is I didn't set my goals high enough. I am a world-class eulogy griver. And every single person I've buried, I normally go to see them, but no, normally they ask me before they die. I go and I say, well, uh, what do you, you know, what do you want me to say? And they always say, oh, I'm sorry for it. I didn't take this risk. I didn't do this, I didn't do that. It's the risk they didn't take. And there's something about the mind. The mind has the tactical advantage over you at all times. At all times of your life, the mind has a tactical advantage over you. Why is that? It knows what you're afraid of. It knows your insecurities. It knows your deep, dark lies. And it starts to push you away from that. It pushes you in a direction that is comfortable. The mind controls everything. So what I realized was that when I was growing up and I was 300 pounds and I got all fat and I got all insecure, I realized that my mind kept taking me in this direction. When things got uncomfortable for me, when I was facing my insecurities, when I was facing my fears, my mind said, oh no, we have a tactical advantage. We need to get you, separate you from this feeling. This feeling over here, life's all about feelings. We want the happy feeling. We don't want that feeling of this sucks. Why am I here? And you don't have any, so, so you can't answer those questions, so you leave. I started realizing that if in that moment you can answer those up questions and you are now in charge of your brain versus your brain ruling you, that's where all that stuff comes from. Let's say it's a man up there or whatever, and they have a chart. And when you're born, they say David Goggins, born February 17th, 1975 at 6 a.m. They write the chart down because they can see everything. They know exactly what you're supposed to be. They know what you're supposed to be. You die, you go to so-called heaven. You arrive at heaven, I'm 300 pounds. I retired as an Ecolab guy, which is okay, just a job, whatever. I go up there and God looks at me and he shows me my chart. And my chart on there says, you were supposed to be a Navy SEAL. You're supposed to weigh 185 pounds. You're supposed to be one of the smartest people on the planet, this, this, all this. You see this. And now you're in heaven, you made it to heaven, but you're like, God, Doug, I was supposed to live that life. I was supposed to live that life. And then you find out that the reason why because we all think that if we pray on it, if we do this, if we do that, whatever, if we don't work, we just, whatever, it's going to magically happen for us. No, I believe that when I'm all said and done with, my whole job is to outwork the chart. Whatever the chart says about me, the all-knowing power up there, I want to get up there and say, him look at me and say, I know everything. I didn't see this. I didn't and see this. I want to feel that. I want to get to the other end of this world and however I'm being judged, whoever's judging me to look at me and say, I did not know. I, I had you at 185, I had you at this, but all this other I was riding as you were living it. I want to, I want to find more. All I can. And in that second, you have to dive in that to find more. Because if you're not willing to go in there and face yourself, you're not gonna find anything. So if there is an ending to this world and there is somewhere to go and there's a judgment, you're gonna get there and you might see a chart and that chart may tell you who the f should have been. And now you get the rest of your life to think about that. Man, I could have lived a much better life if I just would have just suffered a little bit more if I just would have went in that and realized I had so much more but fear and the 40% and living here
versus living here being afraid stop me you said in the book that the only thing to fear is the man staring back at you in the mirror uh, and um, you never know uh, but no one does know initially up front you have to try you have to swing at the plate you have to you know take risk you have to uh, be willing to sacrifice you have to be willing to make commitment um, and just do it. I keep saying that. I mean, it's, it's simplistic. It sounds like I'm, uh, you know, uh, I'm not, I haven't thought the question to, but that's not the point at all. The point is, after 21 years of coaching and after almost 45 years of doing this myself and being a high-performance person in six decades, I realize you just got to...